Hey there. Do you ever talk to your horse when you're driving him in the carriage? Do you uh, tell him what to do? Do you tell him about your day's problems? Well, lots of people talk to their horses in the carriage, and sometimes it's really effective, and sometimes it's not. So I'm going to tell you about the three most common mistakes that people make when they're carriage driving and using verbalizations to communicate with their horses in just a minute. First, let me introduce myself if we have never met. My name's Andy Marcou. I'm from Coachman's Delight. I'm a professional horse trainer. I've been training horses for the sport of carriage driving for about 25 years, which is a long time. I share all of my experience with people like you on my website, coachmansdelight.com, through blog posts, video posts like the one that you're watching right now, uh, downloadable articles and lesson plans, and most importantly, online classes where we dive deep into subjects like this. And, uh, take the whole thing apart little piece by piece and I give you lesson plans to back up that learning. If you're here with me on Facebook Live right now, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. I see Heather and Al are here and that's really great to see you guys there. Uh, if there are other people here, go ahead and drop a comment down into the comment section. Where are you joining me from? I'm always really interested to see where people are joining the Facebook Live broadcast from. If you're watching this not live, if you're watching the replay on my uh, website or on YouTube, do me a favor, just go ahead and throw something in the comment section down there because you count too. It's okay if you missed the live broadcast. All right, so... What are the three big mistakes that I see people making when they are driving their horses uh, and they're using verbalizations for their horses? Well, there's GPS. It's a little known syndrome that's going around the world. It's affecting horses and ponies everywhere. Good pony syndrome. Big, big error there. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second, but then the next one that I want to tell you about is the thing where people never use any enunciation to talk to their horse. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we'll talk about refining your languages with, you know, a note from the memo department of the office of the redundancy department department again how many times do people repeat themselves to their horse unnecessarily and don't communicate clearly to their horse so let's go way back let's go to good pony syndrome do you call your horse a good pony do you tell him he's he's a good boy when he's done something right you know uh, hit the like button if you do, right? We pretty much always do. Uh, you know, if he's done something good, I want to let him know. And I want to say he's a good boy. Uh, but tell me if you've had this experience. You're working your horse. You're in a lesson with somebody like me. Or, you know, you're you're doing a dressage test or something like that. And you say, good boy. And all at once, <laughs> Everything just goes poop, right? You had that horse going like, you know, just diamonds. And then you say good boy to him, and all of a sudden he quits. Has that ever happened to you? Hit the like button if it has, because I know that a lot of people have this experience. And I'm about to tell you why you have that experience. And I'll tell you what, I'm telling you about this not because it's something that I've never done. We do this all the time. You're out there, you're working your horse, you're having a good time, you're getting a lot accomplished, you feel really good about it, and you stop working the horse and you say, good boy. You go, ah, oh, yeah, you're, you're working on that lengthening or you're working on that collection and you, you go and you, you get just what you want and you go oh yes yes good boy whoa and release those reins yeah good boy good boy good boy pause in working your horse say good boy 
Pause in working your horse. Say good boy. Pause in working your horse. Say good boy. Pause in working your horse. Say good boy. Say good boy. What does your horse think that you're about to do? It's just ringing the bell and feeding the dog, just like Pavlov did, right? Okay, if you keep saying and connecting good boy to a pause and work, it shouldn't be a huge, uh, you know, question to you that your horse really has no idea what good boy means, right? He says, oh man, I, I guess it means pause and work. Now, the other place where people really, really, really misuse good boy in their work is they use good boy when they're trying to get their horse past something. Okay, the horse gets tense. Okay, maybe we're coming up to a uh, a water crossing or we're trying to get by, a, you know, a trash barrel or God forbid, oh man, a plastic bag. Holy cow. What if we're trying to get past a plastic bag? And a lot of times people say, oh, good boy, good boy, good boy. And the horse is like biting and striking. He's like, flaring his nostrils he's he's you know maybe he's as bad as rearing or something like that and the person's trying to get him by this scary object this this uneasy moment by saying good boy if that horse isn't walking and that horse is getting uneasy and not comfortable and his heart rate is high and he's he's got his head in the air and you say good boy, why do you want him to think that that is what you want him to do? We use the term good boy to tell the horse that it was something that we just, that he just did something that we really liked, right? So one horse over there, you know, he thinks that uh, good boy means stop working. You know, the other one says, oh, it means go faster because if you're afraid something, it means go faster, right? Uh, you know, the other one has no idea because the person says it to the horse all the time, whether the horse is doing something good or bad. So here are my recommendations because I'm not just going to tell you about what you're doing wrong. I'm going to give you some ideas on how to do it better. Uh, when I use good boy, it's always in response to something that my horse has done right first. Now, when I come up with a horse who does the whole like quit working thing while, you know, I'm working and if I say good boy to him, like my Frisian was like, famous for that. Man, you'd get him right where you wanted and you'd say, yeah, good boy. And he'd be like, right? So instead, what I say is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I make this really nice bright tone, right? And say, yeah, yeah, or good, which is different than good boy. It's, it, it's not like that whole complete sentence. But you can come up with other little verbal rewards that aren't that let's stop working verbal reward. Okay, so that's a nice way to like just kind of make sure that you're able to keep the horse working. And if you're trying to get your horse by something that's scary, that makes the horse uneasy, uncomfortable. Um, I don't say good boy. I say, hey, be brave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. And if the horse starts to spin around away from what I'm trying to go by, I say, no, 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 settle, settle. And I use my verbal intonation to make that horse a little bit more comfortable. I use, you know, just my tone of voice to settle the horse, to get him by that obstacle, you know. And when he's doing it right, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. He starts, you know, putting a toe in the water. I say, yeah, 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 good, yeah. And then when he starts to spin away, I say, no, 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 no. So that leads really neat and clean into my talk about the monotone. Does anybody ever do this to their horse? Please let me know if you've heard your friend speaking to your horse in this tone of voice. 
I don't know why this happens. Let's think about it. If you encounter a baby, you know, like a, a baby human being, you know, those things that people create sometimes, uh, and it's this beautiful little kid in a little stroller in front of you, what happens to you in the very next moment after you've met that baby? You turn into kind of an idiot. All at once, you see the baby and you're like, Oh, isn't she so cute? Oh, look at her. Look at her blue eyes. Oh, my goodness. She's so adorable. And, oh, peek-a-poo, peek-a-poo. <laughs> oh, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Look at my hand. Hand, hand, hand. And you get, like, animated. Why do you get animated? Because that kid gives you a great reaction when you do that. And you do the same thing with puppy dogs, too, right? Or even your old dogs. Hey, come on. Come on, Fido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. And you are very animated. And you do that because you get a reaction from the dog. You get a reaction from the child. And let's think of the dog's intellect. And let's think of the baby's intellect. And let's think of the horse's intellect. Hey, man, they're not that far off, are they? I mean... Yeah, you know, the, maybe the dogs and horses are a little closer to toddlers, but they're essentially, you know, toddler, nonverbal toddler type beings, right? They, they don't have language. They don't share language. They recognize our words and our tones, most importantly, but they don't share our language. So that's why they so highly respond to tonal differences. And dogs love it when you make little silly voices at them. Babies love it when you make little silly voices at them. And guess what? Horses actually like it when you make silly voices to them. And they recognize that as a change in the way you're using your voice and that it is directed towards them. So, when you're using your verbals to your horse, let's think about using it in a really totally different way. So let's think about it from a perspective of like a musical scale. So you, you see there, there, there. Uh, we got do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Okay. At least you guys aren't here to hear me sing, okay? Because that would be bad. But let's think about how I use it, use that tonal difference when I'm asking the horse to walk on or walk up. I start low and I go high. Walk up, walk up. And that tends to be a very forward way of talking to your horse and way of getting your horse to go forward because it's an up tone. You could say just about anything to get them to walk up. You could say Toledo. I guarantee you, you go out tomorrow and you get behind your horse and you start to say Toledo, Toledo. And he might be a little bit like I guess, and he'll check and he'll see if you mean for him to, you know, move forward or walk on or trot. And then you'll say, yeah, good. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And he'll say, okay, guess Toledo means trot now. Cool. I'm good with that. Because horses don't put verbal uh, context necessarily with the words the way you and I do. They don't think walk as that thing that's not a trot. It's slower than a trot. It's four beats, blah, 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 blah. They think that sound means do this thing, right? So when we use the sound going up the scale, he knows we want forward. And then up here, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, just kind of scaling down and walk easy and so you know if i'm trying to get my horse by something that he's being a little bit stupid about well then i say easy saddle 
And I can use this in a lot of different ways because, uh, for example, lots and lots of horses, tell me if your horse does this, you ask him to walk from a trot. You're trotting along and you got a pretty decent trot going, right? But then you say, okay, fluffy pants and walk or and walk and does the horse boom. You might as well just call him a good boy, right? Because he just completely poops out. You know, even though he had a nice forward trot, he just completely poops out into the walk. You know, have you had that experience? Like, hit the little thumb up button if the people are here. I see, you know, Marsh is here and Rose is here and Linda's here and Dot. Have you had horses that completely fart out on you as soon as you go from a trot to a walk? Well, let's think about using this verbal intonation when you transition from the trot to the walk. And trust me, it's actually a little bit harder than you think it is because <laughs> we're so programmed to go and walk is like into our driving DNA, right? So getting yourself, it almost feels like a totally new coordination to get the horse to break from a trot to a walk, but be speaking up as you do. Walk up, Mimi, and walk up. And that feels a little bit weird going from a trot to a walk using your voice in that very forward way. But think of it, your voice is there to replace the leg that the rider normally would use. And what does a good rider do when they are uh, going from a trot to a walk or a canter to a trot? Throw something in. This is your quiz question of the evening. Is what does a rider do when they end up pushing from a trot to a walk? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? You put your leg on to keep that energy, to keep that forward momentum. And so the verbal equivalent of putting your leg on when you're carriage driving is the up speak. All right. And walk up. So getting yourself to convince to say walk up while you're doing a downward transition takes a little bit of practice and takes some, some, you know, vocal coordination. But I'll tell you what, if you have one of those horses that kind of poops out into the walk from the trot, man, that is the way forward. So I hope that you'll use that little trick. Okay. I love to see so many people jumping on and I'm going to try to get to some of the questions in here later, but I just want to try to get to some of the points that I wanted to make first because actually I'm a little goofy when it comes to actually reading all of this stuff and talking to you at the same time. I can, I'm a little bit of a one trick pony. I can look at you or I can look at my screen, but uh, I'll get in there. I can see that Sarah's in here and Lacey's in here and that's really great. And I saw uh, Janet just said, yeah, squeeze with your legs. So she's obviously replying to the question about what you do for, through your transitions. Your, your voice is your leg from now on, okay? Think about it that way, especially if you're coming from a riding background. Okay, so what's the third thing? The first thing was GPS, good pony syndrome. Think about how you're using that, that term with your horse and maybe replace it with something that still keeps that horse going. Uh, the next one was the monotone. Don't be afraid to make cartoon voices with your horse. God, get a little animated with them. Let them know when they're doing stuff right. The next one uh, is, comes from a note received from the memo department of the document division of the Office of the Redundancy Department over again at the memo section. How many people do this with their horses? Try. Trot, trot, fluffy pants, trot, fluffy pants, trot, fluffy pants, trot, 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 trot. I see this happening in lessons 
all the time. And, uh, you know, actually it's kind of funny, uh, you know, in the winter. So, you know, we're, we're having this meeting here in the winter and I find that horses are a little fresher. It's a little bit cooler out. They haven't done as much work. They're not as consistent in work. So they have a little zoomy pants on, right? So horses that are like really heavy kind of logy horses during the rest of the season, your drafty guys, yeah, they're a little bit more sparky this time of year. And you may be asking that horse to trot on entirely out of habit because when you're driving him in August, you know, and it's, you know, 80, 90 degrees out with 700% humidity, your pony doesn't want to go anywhere and you're used to having to push him on. You know, I saw that in lessons just this weekend. Somebody hadn't driven in a while. She got out there with that big, heavy pony. And there she is saying, walk up, walk up, walk up. And I'm looking at this pony. And he's like, bop, 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 bop. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are we asking him to walk up? And it was just not even a nervous habit. The student wasn't nervous or concerned about her horse, but it was part of her programming that this is what you say to this pony over and over and over again, right? And so it became this mantra. Horses will tune out mantras really quickly. If you keep repeating yourself and you do not connect action to whatever it is that you made for a word or a noise, the horse will assume that it means nothing. Think of how easily they connect good boy with stop working. Good boy, quit working. Okay, done. Set me off. All right. Well, if they're e able to connect that very easily, they're also very easily able to disconnect trot, pony trot, pony trot, pony trot, pony trot, right? When you start, you know, even if it's clicking, you can just be clicking continuously. You can be verbalizing continuously and your horse is going to get dead to that really quickly. So you can't afford to just keep uh, repeating the same thing time and time and time again because he'll just, obviously that doesn't mean anything. So think specifically what it is that you want. Ask for it. If you don't get it, ask for it again, but be ready to back yourself up. Are you going to back yourself up with a whip? Perhaps. Are you going to, if the horse is not slowing down and you've said, and you know, you, you you do a little half halt and pick up the contact and he doesn't slow down. What are you going to do to back yourself up? Okay, well, maybe another half halt, a little bit more clearly, a little bit more firmly this time, and you're going to escalate. But don't keep repeating things that are getting no reaction out of your horse. So uh, you've got to be more methodical than that in how you're using your verbalizations. Now, one other thing, just right on that same tone or on that same subject is let's use the same tones and verbalizations to mean the same thing all the time. If I'm trying to teach somebody English and I say, hey, buddy, could you go out and get the car? The first time I ask him to go get the car, and then uh, he asks me where I left my phone, and I say, or his phone. I, I said, oh, yeah, I left your phone in the sedan. And then next time I say, uh, do you, are, are the keys to the SUV in here? And then the next time I say, I mean, carry on. However many different ways, the Chevy, the Toyota, blah, blah, blah. It's going to take a long time for that person to attach car to all of those things that I just attached, right? So if you're using different verbalizations to get your horse to walk on, to trot, to do a lengthening, uh, or coming back through a downward transition, and you're using a different way of verbalizing your request each time you do it, it's going to take a lot longer for your horse to understand, okay, these four things mean I go forward and these four things mean I slow down. 
Now, the more specific you get with your verbal commands, you can get more specific action. So I just saw a little while ago in the uh, the comments section, somebody wanted me to talk about G and HA. All right. So a lot of people, a very, very popular thing with draft horse people say G is right and HA is left. And, and some people say G and some people say HA. It doesn't really matter. But it's a really specific two different sounding sounds. And so you know, if they're trying to get the horse to step over to the right, they'll say, gee over, gee over, gee over, okay? And that's great. That's fabulous if every time you use the term G or, or, or whatever, you ask the horse to step to the right. Now, you can also use the term right, whichever way right is on this screen. <laughs> um, I use right and left. I use right and left in hazards all the time because that's where that little extra verbalization can really help that horse get, you know, understand what it is that we're going to do next and we tend to be making short, fast turns in hazards. Um, and I've only got a 50-50 shot of saying the correct right or left or which way I'm supposed to be at telling him to go. And that's why I don't use G and Ha because I'll screw up G and Ha even more than I screw up left and right. So, but yeah, as long as I have trained that horse that, hey man, when I say right, I mean a big turn to the right, he can attach meaning to that. When I'm asking for collection from a horse, I half halt and I say, trot ease, trot ease trot ease and so you hear there's that little trot that push and then that little descending tone which is but keep it together so i want you to go forward but i want you to keep it right here go forward right here go forward right here you could use that as a verbalization it's a little bit more of a mouthful but you can connect whatever verbalizations you want to whatever actions your horse is taking. You know, so I had somebody, um, I was giving lessons and it was before I had my headsets uh, that, you know, a lot of you have experienced when I'm out there teaching with the headsets and we can talk to each other and you can hear me really clearly. But before I had those headsets, well, teaching lessons with a carriage in a football field size arena, man, it's really hard for us to communicate. So I used to, Oftentimes, if somebody was doing something really nice and I wanted to let them know from across the field, I would go, <whistles> yeah, <whistles> funniest thing ever. This guy's driving along. He's got these nice little, you know, ponies. Doo -doo 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 -doo. They're cruising along. They're doing great. I go, yeah, good, good, good. <whistles> Boink, he practically falls out of carriage because the ponies stopped so fast because he had trained them or somebody had trained them to stop when you when they heard a whistle. Hey, I don't have anything against that. I, it was incredibly effective, and it took two or three emergency stops for me to stop whistling on them. And I said, yeah, man, you better not get on my back side, because one day I'll be out there watching you do dressage, and I'll be like, what a nice, oh, what happened there? <laughs> but you can train any noise to any action. So, um, how many of you out there in Facebook land or watching the replay on YouTube, just drop a comment. Do you use the chirp when you're driving your horse? Hey, fluffy pants. And how many different chirps do you have? All right. So number one, can you chirp? A lot of people can't chirp because they can't say rigatoni. They can't roll their r's. Right? And so rat makes it very difficult to chirp. But most people can, right? Like a horse. Well, if you put in a little like bird tone in there, oh, you can chirp too, even if you can't say rigatoni. The reason we use chirps in training is it is so distinct and it is so not part of our human language that the horse knows instantly that that chirp is for them. And for me, a chirp is a verbal half halt. 
Okay, so each time that I'm doing a half halt with a horse, oftentimes it's accompanied by that sound. And I actually have several different chirps. I have that's like that's like with the half halt and getting ready for a downward transition, or really the the request phase of the downward transition. Now, if I'm saying easy. You know, kind of like a dove. Saddle, saddle. You know, and I, you know, the longer I drive a horse, the the more of a connection I have with that horse, the more specific those chirps get to the horse. So that's something that somebody was asking me about on uh, CoachmansDelight.com on the uh, I don't know if it was on the Ask Andy page or on the post about tonight's video, uh, you know, do you have uh, specific verbalizations for specific horses and does it change horse by horse? Yeah, absolutely. There are horses that, you know, I, I talk a little bit differently to because I get different reactions out of them. Sure, a lot of my verbalizations sound very much the same, but when I'm talking to Mimi, the one that you saw in the video last week when I was pretending to have a runaway with her, I use a lot of cartoon voices and a lot of, ooh, Mimi, Mimi, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, who's, who's good? She loves cartoon voices. You see, when I start making that little silly voice, I see her ears flip up and she feels really good about it. So that's really good. I have some other horses that I get, like, you know, more manly, more macho horses. They, they just like it when I get a little bit deep with my voice and, um, maybe not quite that far. That, that would sound a little, you know what? Truth be told, if that worked, you know, if I had to do Mickey Mouse to get better work out of my horse, I probably would. So, uh, yeah, you know, in those, those chirps and those half halts, put together, making sure I connect a, a, an action to the sound. So next week I'm giving a whole class on the half halt. And I'm going to break down every last bit of a half halt and how to train your horse for a half halt. Now I know that some of the people who are in here uh, watching this video right now probably have taken the half halt class in the past. And, but that class was quite a few years old and I started taking the whole class apart and unpacking it and oh my goodness, I needed to build this verbalization into the half halt because with carriage driving, the verbalization is part of that half halt. So you've got to put your sounds together with the, the actions that you want from your horse. All right. So I think that I am going to leave it there and I am going to encourage you if you've taken classes, let the people know that you enjoy the classes here so that the people who are here watching will be excited about taking classes with us. Uh, next week, I've got that class coming up on uh, building the half halt. Uh, as I say, if you've taken that class in the past, it is going to be not a whole new class because, well, the half halt hasn't changed, but man, I've got a bunch of teaching and a bunch of students under my belt since I first wrote that class, and there's a lot of extra good information and maybe even an extra lesson plan in that class for you. So if you haven't taken that class in a while, you absolutely should. If you're a teacher, and I know I'm looking at the list of names here, there are definitely people in here that I see teach lessons, you know, pretty regularly. Please go ahead and encourage your students to take this class on the half halt because, boy, it'll make your job a lot easier when, when they show up to the next lesson really understanding what a half halt is all about. I really appreciate you being here for this live session. If you missed it or you're just jumping in on the tail end of the live session, I promise I'll put it up on YouTube and on CoachmansDelight.com. Uh, there'll be a special post there if you're enjoying it. Help me out. Go ahead and share this video. If you're looking at it on YouTube right now, go down there. It's somewhere over there. There's a subscribe button. Help me out. I don't have that many subscribers. Help me get 
up to, I don't even have 500 subscribers. Help me get a thousand subscribers. It'd be really fun. It'd be really cool. And lots of other carriage people could learn from us there. If you're on my website, go in the comment section below and ask whatever questions you have about verbalization. If you're still live with me here on Facebook, that's really awesome. Uh, throw something in the comments. If you have questions, I'll sit at the computer for a little while and try to answer some of those questions, and maybe we'll do a follow-up on the subject. Okay, thanks again for joining me. You guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.